Hey guys and welcome back to another video tutorial and today we're going to be going over cores and what it is and how to use it. Uh, this video is going to be a lot of me just talking and sort of blabbing to the microphone so apologize if it's a little bit boring than the others but um, yeah I think it's an important thing to know and I hope you enjoy. Okay so first of all what is cores? Uh, Core stands for cross-origin resource sharing, and that kind of gives it away um, what it might be used for. So eventually in these tutorials, we're going to be building a React front end, and eventually we're going to be then connecting that to this API. But we're going to run into an issue if we don't set up cores, and that's simply because both the, the front end and the back end are from different origins from each other which is commonly the case if you have an API, you normally have it on a separate server to your front end, uh, just because it's easier to maintain and possibly update from then onwards. Uh, but yeah, if you think about it, like that means you're gonna have two servers and one server is from a different origin than the API. And default, that won't be allowed because of security reasons. So what we need to do is we need to sort of accept our front end service or if you imagine your API is used for like a public API for many people to use, you're going to want to accept everybody's sort of like uh, access to that server. Okay, so how do we do this? So there's an npm package called cores, which we're going to uh, use. So we're going to do npm install and you could just do i instead of install, which is a bit quicker. Um, and then we just type in cores. So we wait for this to download and then we go head over to our server.js file and we can just import it up the top here. Const cause is require cause like so. And then once we've done that, let's just take a look at the NPM packages and then the cause package specifically. And we can see that they've just imported it like we have done and they've just done app.use cause. So yeah, we can just copy this in here and let's set up another comment and we'll just do it at the top. We'll say um, setting up the cause config and we'll just paste that in here. Okay, so let's see what options we have for this. Here we go, configurable options. So we have an origin which looks like it can be a a uh, string, an array, uh, so yeah, you can either have, let's see if they have an example here. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a nice simple example. So you can see that you can pass cores or uh, options into the sort of uh, function which we're using here. So we could just give it an array here, uh, an object even here, and this will work as the options for this package. So we could set the origin and this could be a string or an array of accepted origin points, but this is just going to be like, uh, so like website.com, whatever like the front end of your server is. And this is going to be, if you only want this to be ac like gained access to this API, then you'd put in your front end URL here. Um, and obviously you can use the environment uh, variables that we set up to kind of change this to localhost or your domain, depending on which environment this backend is running in. Um, because obviously if you're running it locally, you're gonna want to connect to localhost and not your URL here. But the default for this is just the uh, star. So that just means every everyone's allowed to access this, which I think we're gonna be doing because I want to build sort of like a public API, which people can sort of like use to pull some cool information. So I'm just going to keep it at that, which means I don't really need to have that option in there. And I don't think I'm going to need any options for my specific uh, configuration because I'm not going to be doing many or any restrictions on this API for other people. So, but we are going to just look at the options that we have. So we had origin, we've gone over that. We also have methods and this allows you to sort of uh, set what methods are allowed to be used on your API and these methods are like if you see in our roots folder for user we have the get method and the post method um, but we could block post methods uh, for people by just not putting in post in this array so let's just let's just do that let's just go 
methods and then make an array. Okay, so now these are the accepted methods. So we can be like, okay, people can get information from our server, but like if we wanted them to post, we put it in here, but we're like, we don't want them to post to the server. That's fine. Again, the default is all of them, which is like post. And then I think you have like patch, you have a delete. Yep. And you probably have a put, I'm not sure if that, yeah, if that is, yeah, I think that's all of them. Um, but again, as I just said, the default is all of them. So we don't need that. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're just going to be using this here. Uh, let's just have a quick look, whatever things they go over. Um, yeah, so you can read all of this yourself. Uh, there's not much information I should, I need to give you other than what I've gone over now, because it's fairly simple. It does what it kind of says it does. And it just allows different origins to your API. Uh, you can have, what I think is quite cool is they show you how to have like a dynamic, um, like a whitelist thing. So you have this array here, which this could be used to pull from a database. So you have different accounts. Some might be a developer account and you might want them to have access to your API. Then you could have like an array storing their sort of domain URLs and then putting it in the whitelist here um, or just like spitting it out into an array. And then you can use this uh, origin function which returns uh, these individually uh, so that would mean that their URL would be able to connect to your API as well um, so that's pretty cool you can have like dynamic whitelisting on the origin um, so yeah this goes over a lot and it's probably worth a good read but f as I've said a hundred times like this is probably all going to be need to use and just to prove everything's working fine still we'll just do npm start and we get the whole your server was now running. Um, I think they have a message here. They have like cause enable web server is listening on. So maybe people have just copied that. Um, so. There we go. We have now have a cause enable web server. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this lesson. Uh, it's pretty, pretty basic, pretty pretty just most of it was just me talking and explaining and not much were coding was happening but I think it's important for you to know what cause is because otherwise you're just going to run into this issue when you try and connect to a front end and you're not going to know why uh, so yeah that was it for this lesson the next lesson I believe we're going to start the authentication system we're going to be using passport and we're going to be making JSON web tokens so we'll be able to have users on our site We'll be able to have a login endpoint which returns a web token, which we can then use in the header of any sort of request to then authenticate that user. And then, yeah, and we'll be going over after that some middleware so we can make only authenticated routes and, yeah, all that good stuff. But after this uh, API tutorial, as I mentioned earlier, I'll be going over a front end tutorial series which will be teaching React. And we'll be going over React Redux and React Sega and all of the sort of latest React technologies, uh, as well as like a routing system, obviously, for single page applications and then connecting it to this API and eventually having a sort of full front end and back end product which work with each other. Uh, so, yeah, stay tuned for them tutorials and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and subscribe to upcoming videos using the bell. Thank you and have a good day.